I want to welcome you to the Crypto Revolution Trading View series. As always, there's a link in the description to download Trading View. This is support and resistance for beginners. Let's go. The four most common types of support and resistance are one, price levels. This will be areas or zones where price has interacted with on multiple occasions in the past. Two, trend lines. This could be one line below or above price action or multiple as part of a pattern. Three, Fibonacci levels. And four, technical indicators such as the moving averages. Now in this video, we're gonna focus entirely on price levels. One, because with a little practice, it's relatively easy to learn. And two, it's probably the most used out of the four and is essential to learn in order to become a good trader. I like to think of it like you're learning to play basketball. You have to learn to dribble before you can shoot, and that's what support resistance is. You have to learn it first before you can add other ideas with trading. Now here we are on an atom chart. Now to start with, it's a good idea to scroll out to at least an hour or longer time frame. So in this example, we're on the four hour time frame. We just want to get as much price action as possible. So that way, when we're determining our support and resistance lines, we know which ones hold more weight. You know, has there been price action touched this area months ago, weeks ago? It just helps you get a better idea of what's stronger support and stronger resistance. From there, I'm just looking for areas where price has interacted the most, at least two or more times. So as I drag my mouse up, for example, I can see kind of along here that price action has interacted once, twice, three times, four times. So then I can put my mouse over that area, and if you hit Alt-H on your keyboard, it will draw a horizontal line for you across the screen. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a few others in. These are ones that I had already previously added. But once I get them on here, I will explain to you really quick why I chose these ones. So if you look down here at the bottom, we have one, two, three touches right along in this area. So clearly that's a good area to, to mark. Right here along here, we have one, two, three touches for this line. Up here on the line above it, one, two, three touches as well. Going up that next line, We've got tub touches over here recently. We've had touches dating back as far as March with one here and a little bit around here. You know, going up another level. You can kind of see that I'm trying to choose major areas with two or more touches. Next, I think it's important to understand a few concepts. One, what makes support support? And what makes resistance resistance? And then two, what if the touches are close but not perfect? It's important to think of support and resistance as a zone, and we'll explain that a bit more as we go. So what makes support and resistance is actually rather simple. I've changed the colors of my lines to red and green just to make this a little easier to explain. So anytime your current price action is above a, layer, a level that you indicated on your chart, that means that area could act as potential support. So you can see that I've indicated all these levels that price has interacted with that are below the current price are support levels. Anything above the current price is gonna act as resistance. It means that when price reaches that level, there's a good chance that if in the past it's been rejected on multiple occasions, that it may not bust right through it the first time because it's gonna act as resistance. Another easy way to think of it is buyers and sellers. Anytime the price action comes down to a level and is able to bounce off that level, what does that tell you? There were buyers waiting at that level. And the flip side of that, anytime your price action is reaching an upper resistance level and is getting rejected, it just means that there are sellers waiting at that level. Now the next part is a bit trickier, but very important to understand. Often with price action, instead of an exact price level where the price interacts two or more times, you may have what we refer to as a zone, which can be a small area where price has reacted to multiple times on the top of the zone as well as the bottom of the zone. Let's take this wild USDT chart for an example. As you can see, I've drawn this white line, which is a support resistance line. 
And I've drawn these arrows to indicate that the price action actually touched this area once, twice, three times, almost perfectly. But then I've also drawn some circles to indicate that there were times that price action got really close and then got rejected. Over here again, really close and then got rejected. Well, why is that? Well, whenever a line is, you know, resistance in this case, as we talked about previously, it just means that there were sell orders stacked there. The thing you need to realize is not all the sell orders are going to be stacked at the exact same price. They're going to be staggered, you know, just below that resistance in this case. So then that recreates what we refer to as a zone. Now let's zoom in on the same coin, just up here a little bit higher. Now I've circled some areas where price, once it broke through that previous resistance, you can see that it came down in this white line that I indicated as a support resistance level. Where I circled, it bounced, you know, but it did wick just below it. Came back up right here, it bounced pretty close to right on the line, but there were still some small wicks below it. And right here, it got below it temporarily, but then recovered. Went all the way up here, and then down here again, wick just below it, you know, wick right on it, wick right on it. You know, this area over here obviously has been below and above it, but this is what I mean. We have to kind of look at this whole area as a zone. Next, we're gonna zoom back out on this wild chart, and we're gonna go over a concept that I think is the most important of everything we go over in this video. And that is that not all support and resistances are created equal, right? You're gonna find out that some support and some resistance levels are clearly much more significant than others. Let me explain. We're back on wild. And we're going to focus on this lower support slash resistance zone. And I want you to pay attention to a couple of things closely. This coin launched, there was a sell off. And then as it tried to recover, it got rejected at this area, not once, but twice. So that was where the sellers were waiting. If you see that area had the power to drop the coin by nearly 70% before it recovered. Well, it recovered, came all the way back up and tested that area again. Again, strong rejection, 50% this time, all the way down. Here you can't see as well, but okay, it's 27%. Hit that area, rejected it hard. When it finally broke through that strong resistance, it had a nearly 70% pump before it found some new upper resistance. So now we'll focus on that area. Hits that area, it gets rejected harshly. Comes back down, finds support here. Same area, rejected harshly found some temporary support, lost it, regained it, hit that area, rejected. Then it was able to break that area, retest, and it completely reversed the trend. This is what you're trying to look for. Stronger or weaker areas of support resistance, realize the stronger ones are the ones that can completely reverse price action in the opposite direction, like it did here on multiple occasions, like it did up in here on multiple occasions. And these are the support slash resistance areas you need to put more emphasis on. Next, let's briefly go over what constitutes as a support slash resistance flip. We're still on wild. And now we're back down here on this lower zone that was previously resistance on several occasions. And then we're gonna go ahead and zoom in to see what happened when it finally broke through that resistance. Zoomed in here on the 15 minute for a while, we can see that price action was able to break up through this heavy zone of resistance and it even came back and tested it as support and pushed upward. The easy way to think of that is all of the sellers that were waiting in this area, they finally got exhausted, price action pushed its way up through, and then as it revisited this zone, all of those sellers turned to buyers, which then created price action movement to the upside. I also think it's important to add, if you were trading this idea, you need to also watch some of our other videos on what makes a successful retest, as well as the video on letting volume be your guide. The final thing I wanna go over in this video is the significance of timeframes as far as support slash resistance go. Understanding these support resistance flips are happening all the time on smaller timeframes and occasionally on larger timeframes. It's important to understand the difference between the two as well as the significance between a support resistance flip on say a five minute time frame versus a support resistance flip on a daily time frame. So again, we're on wild and this is the 12 hour chart. 
If you look down here, you can see the significance of this lower support slash resistance line where it spent a total of almost 60 days below it, testing it once, twice here, three here, a fourth time here, and then it was finally able to break it. Earlier, we showed that when you zoomed into smaller time frames, you were able to see the support slash resistance flip, and then the price moved upward. Again, up here, it spent about 17 days below this upper resistance, testing it once, twice, three times before it broke through and then retested it as support. And then it stayed above that for another 12 days before it broke down and then retested it as resistance once, twice before price action went completely the opposite way. Well, now let's zoom in and look at some of the price action on lower time frames, just in this little area right here. As you can see now, we're zoomed in on the 15 minute time frame for Wild. And from the time it put in this spike to a high, it then put in a low, a lower high, a lower low, a lower high. And then it just started kind of ranging between temporary zones of resistance and support. Then you can see eventually it broke down. So it lost this support level. And then it retested it as resistance. And now the previous floor became the ceiling temporarily. Tested it, retested it. Then eventually it was able to break through that and retest that previous resistance and flip it as support. Then it had some more upper resistance that it eventually it also broke through, retested, turned that previous resistance into support. And then as you kind of go through this, you can see eventually up here in this area, this was the original lower high from clear back here. It was able to break up through that and turn that previous resistance into support. And that concludes our support and resistance video for beginners. As always, remember there is a link in the description to download TradingView, and we'll catch you next time.